Today, I'm taking a break from the history videos to explore a fun little what if look at the Disney parks. These days, we pay a mostly flat admission fee to get into the Walt Disney World theme parks, and with that fee, we get to enjoy whichever attractions we want as many times as we want. However, that wasn't always the case. From the opening of Disneyland in 1955 until the early 1980s, Disney employed the use of ticket books. The finite tickets not only limited how many rides you could ride, but the A through E class system limited what you could ride. If you wanted to ride more after that, you had to buy more tickets. Today, I want to explore what it would be like if Disney still used those ticket books. I want to thank subscriber Udalali who wrote in and suggested this topic. If you want to check out their channel later, they're two sisters who frequently vlog from Disney World. Now for this what if, I'm using the 1979 Magic Kingdom ticket book as a reference. Back then, a 12 ticket adventure book for an adult, which included park admission, cost $10. There were technically still ticket books in 1980 through 1982, but at that point they had started to phase out the A through E class system for just general ride tickets and where's the fun in that? So, instead of burying the point of the video any further and rather than running through every single ride, Here's my quick take on what a modern Magic Kingdom ticket book would look like today. With this list, I tried to maintain the same distribution of rides per ticket type, but tried to take into account the changing tastes of what guests want to seek out on a Disney vacation today. Now, it's important to note that the A through E ticket designation was a bit of a malleable one. There wasn't any set in stone metric used to decide which rides fell into which category. Generally speaking, the e-tickets were reserved for the newer, more expensive, and more popular attractions, but that wasn't always the case. Up until the end of the ticket books, the Jungle Cruise remained an e-ticket attraction, despite the fact that it was a 24-year-old concept with 24-year-old technology. Still, it was popular. The Country Bear Jamboree was also an e-ticket attraction. Meanwhile, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, while enjoyed by many, wasn't new or technologically advanced or especially popular, so it was a sea ticket ride. In short, the really clever part of this ticket system was that every year Disney had the opportunity to move around rides to different letters wherever they saw fit. Because they also had control over how many of each ticket the books contained, they could use the two together in order to try and influence how much guests visited each ride. Of course, it wasn't a tight control. Nothing was stopping guests from simply not using certain tickets or buying extras of others, but it was enough to influence most guests' behavior. And personally, that's really the one perk of the ticket book system that I think we lost with the introduction of general admission. Now, don't get me wrong, I love general admission, and given the option, I would pick it any day of the week. I think it's the natural extension of what these ticket books were originally intended to do, which was take care of the spending upfront so that you would spend the rest of your day enjoying your trip without constantly thinking about your wallet. That said, look at this list again. Let's be honest, how many guests probably go to the Magic Kingdom every day and only ever care about hitting up these seven rides? I'd wager a lot. Now, it's their trip, so I won't go as far as to say that that's wrong or anything, but it's a bit of a shame that they'd potentially miss out on some otherwise really great experiences just because they're not new or flashy. With this old ticket book system, they would be paying into a package deal that would incentivize them to check out those other experiences. In other words, it encouraged a more well-rounded visit. Now, for the other parks at Disney World, well, they kind of stand as great examples of why it's ultimately a good thing that these ticket books are a thing of the past. It'd be almost hard to fill a 12 adventure ticket book for them. Epcot has 9 to 10 experiences when you consider that the films at the Magic Kingdom were typically free. As far as the Animal Kingdom, that too is also at around 9. Hollywood Studios? Right now? Forget about it. Point being, you'd be able to essentially do everything at least once, and some things more than once, which kind of defeats the effectiveness of a ticket book. Like I said, I'm glad we have the ticket system we have now. And if you want to learn more about why they ultimately made the change, I have an older video all about it. I just figured it'd be fun to look at the current rides through the classic lens of the A through E ticket system. So now I want to hear from you. Does this breakout look right? Am I crazy for putting certain rides under certain letters? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to see what everyone's own version of this classic ticket book looks like. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.